afternoon. Welcome. Thank you for attending the February 19, 2014 regular board meeting of the Wareham Housing Authority. I'd like to announce that we're being uh, cabled. WCB TV from Wareham is recording this meeting. I'd like to ask everyone to shut off all their electronic devices and stand to, for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> to the flag of the United States, States of America, America to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Protect our troops. Yeah. Save our troops. Okay. Um, recognizing a quorum, I call the meeting to order. The present is Bob Paulatus. Mr. Santos, Mr. Lockwood, and our new appointee from the Commonwealth, Jane Donahue. She's presented her credentials, so she's eligible to participate and vote in this meeting. With that, I'd like to welcome Jane and ask her if she'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Bob. It truly is a pleasure and a privilege to be representing the Commonwealth here at our own Wareham Housing Authority. I'm looking forward to working with all of the members of the board and our new administrative assistant, Jackie Hickey, who I've known since she was a little girl. And, um, and all of you who live here in, <laughs> all of you who live here in the, in the housing, that, that we, try, we will try to do our best. I will try to do my best. I've done my homework. The board that you have sitting here before you is really moving things forward, and I'm sure that you all know that. So without further ado, I'll let Bob please take the meeting back over. I have a little bit of a question and answer on catching up. Maybe hopefully we'll get to it at the end of the meeting. All right. Very good. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to introduce, again, our administrator, Jackie Hickey, our resident volunteer scribe, Barbara, <laughs> and uh, your and our res resident representative of the Residences Unofficial Association and our, our, our ombudsman and liaison, Mr. Henry Fernandez, or is it Hernandez? Mom just spell it right. <laughs> With an H. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip the first couple of items on the agenda. Mr. Frank DeFoli from the Board of Health has come. Uh, and ask him he been willing to be present with us and I'd just like to ask him some questions about the protocols and he's got a lot of experience in other communities where there was housing authorities right yeah you know, just all right and uh, I just ask if you could fill us in I know you passed a new health ordinance in September about inspecting units and I just uh, <clears throat> know that under Chapter 121B, Section 7, it says, as far as tractable, housing and authorities shall make use of the services of the agencies, offices, of, and employees of the town in which such authority is organized, and such town shall, if requested, make available such services. So we, as a housing authority, are required under state law to have annual inspections. We, unfortunately, had our first inspection in about eight years this past fall. After we had the review by DHCD, they found one of the issues they found was there was no annual inspection. So we have an annual inspection program, and your folks came in and did an annual inspection also, and they gave us a summary of their report uh, a month ago or so ago. So I, I just ask, what's the protocol? How does that work? Is it, does it, can we work together to have one one comprehensive inspection, or do they, do they well, supersede each other? Or? The reason why we started the program was because of the numerous phone calls we got from the type of housing that was going on that was not right. <coughs> you know, uh, we get between three or four hundred calls a year. This is what I got from the uh, Bob Ethier, the health inspector. Okay. Not, so, from, not from the housing authority? Not, no, I don't <laughs> know where. Not, no, I'm sure there might be one or two there. Uh, <laughs> they, they did do was egg warm, uh, and when they did that, uh, I was told by some of the guys who were doing it, that that was uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, not up to par. Right, right, yeah. And so uh, that, that's an example right there. And, uh, you know, uh, there are grants and other things out there, and the Board of Health would have no problem. 
problem working with the housing authority of getting something to, to do that. But when we find places like that, you know, we just, you make an example of it and yeah. try, to, try to take care of it. Um, so far, as far as I can say, uh, it's going pretty good. Uh, there's, I think, a little over 700 um, uh, units that uh, have uh, signed up. So, uh, you know, it's hundred dollars a unit, so it's, I, I don't even want to say it, it's going to help the town, too, because, mm -hmm. you know, the money goes, in, some of that money goes into the town, too. And, you know, and the town is in such tough shape, no matter what. In the tougher shape they get in, the less you might see people not taking care of their places. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think it was a good thing, it was a good thing for the renters and the people that are renting it, because, once you inspect that place, you know, you put a seal on it, if it turns to, do, uh, say, it gets a little bit out of the way it's supposed to be, well, they know it was the renter that did it. Okay. So, I mean, that's the way, that's the way I feel it helps both. So, and, you know, for $100 uh, a year, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. $10 a month, if that, not even that, $9, $8 a month, you know, $8.50. Right. To know that you've got the place that uh, you can live in, and it's been looked at, mm -hmm. and so that's that, that's the main reason why we brought, uh, we did this program. I, uh, you know, I, I I have to admit I was kind of the blame on starting it because I I was a building commissioner in East End for 13 years, and they started that program about four years ago while I was there, and it worked really good, and uh, and so that's I had kind of brought it up at the meetings and they talked about it and. The health agent thought it was a great idea too, and the board did. So that's the reason why we started. And uh, I just think uh, you know it, it's good for the town because you know that you're going to have housing that's fine. You know. So how does it work in relation? Yeah. Were there other housing authorities in the other places you were that? that there, there, there was uh, not <laughs> very little in the town of East End. Okay. But, but uh, I, I understand what you're saying that you have two inspections, but right. the inspections are different right. from what I'm hearing. I'm just saying what I'm hearing yeah. from, from, from the health agent. Yeah, right. That, that they look at two different things. And so uh, my understanding, and I haven't done one, but the, uh, the, the uh, people that work for the board have done them. Uh, they, they look at different things, mm -hmm. you know? And so that was one of the big things. Just should we be charging the housing authority, uh, the, you know, the $25? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, are they okay? But after looking at Ago, I felt, hey, look, you know, maybe we can work out something down the line mm -hmm. to where we know that the housing is fine and maybe we don't have to charge them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm I, sure I, we can work something yeah, out. I'd also be interested in our issue. Um, my, my personal concern is when we have a turnover of a unit. Yeah. That's what we want to have it inspected, make sure it's up to stuff before we reoccupy it. Yeah, but that would be done by uh, by ourselves. By yourself. Right. Yeah. Right. And, um, the only time we would come in again is if we get a call okay. during that year. Okay. But we definitely can maybe talk about it because yeah. that was a big thing that was brought up. Yeah. A couple of members of the board saying, you know, it's a double inspection. You know. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, if we know that the places are fine, and you know, we talk to your board, and you you put the seal on it that we uh, we don't need it, then yeah. you know. We do recognize we do recognize and appreciate the services we get from the town, and, and notwithstanding that we're tax exempt, we know we get EMS, we get fire coming and helping tenants that get need uh, help getting locked out, and we get police services, and we get this. We since I've been here, we've got the town has now worked an arrangement with us where we get our gasoline through them at a much lower price. We get we um, what else do we get from them? Uh, I'll give you my suggestion that a few of your board yeah. members come in front of the Board of Health. Yeah. Talk about how you guys get the inspections. What they have, if you have some kind of a list of what We could share our, our yeah. inspection and list with you. Can, you know, I don't, I don't see any yeah. reason why you're not dropping it. Yeah. Uh, we, we, the Housing Authority feels that the places are up to par, that, we, that they don't need that. Hey. Yeah. That's fine. But to follow up, I think I think as as a as a good citizen of the town and a good neighbor, the housing authority recognizing the services we get when we get our 
feet financially stable here, it would be nice if we could make a payment in lieu of taxes to the town yeah. for those services. Well, you, you're only talking $20, too. I yeah. mean, it's $100 for the first one. Yeah. But if you've got something like the housing authority, it's only $25 for each one. Yeah. That's not a lot. You know, uh, I just don't think that's a lot. Oh, no, it, 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 it's not. Would you go out to take a look at it? Right. If you've got a place that's fine. It's well, not, and we just have to build that in our budget because we're already, yeah. we only got four, five months left in our fiscal year and it wasn't in the budget, so we'll put it in the budget for next year if that um, is, a, is a need, if we can come to that conclusion. But we'd love to meet with your board. Yeah, Anybody fine. else have questions of Mr. DeFelice? No, Jackie? No. Any comments? Yeah, well, that'd be great if you want right. to set something up in the near future. If you want the board to come or a couple of members, that's fine. Yeah, and Jackie. We can talk about whoever, you know, yeah. maybe working something out, maybe a lesser fee. Yeah. You know, I mean, since there's so many of them, yeah. you know, they can go in and they can come through. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just talking myself, but I'm yeah. sure the board would go along with something yeah. like that. It puts a strain on the house. Yeah, and then you had no problem. When you instituted the fee, DOR had no problem with it. Like, it, the fees are supposed to be reflective of the cost of providing the service. Right, so it's not exactly. a quote tax and they go after you for trying to in raise yeah, right. revenue yeah, by. Yeah, there was no problem. Nobody, yeah. uh, nobody put us the They did that to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, anybody have no questions? Thank you so much. Right, very nice. Appreciate Thank you very much, sir. It. Happy right. Valentine's Day. All right, you too. Thank you. Okay. Pass the word along that we're trying to work with the town. We want to work with the town. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Since hopefully Guy Campina will arrive, but if you don't, we'll take his him up when he does. With that, I'll switch back to the regular regular agenda. Everyone have the agendas. First item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the January 22nd, 2014 minutes, which have been sent to you in your packages. Minutes of the 2014 January 22nd meeting. have a uh, motion on the minutes of January 22nd, 2014. I'll make the motion to accept the minutes of January 22nd. Okay, motion to accept the minutes of January 22nd. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Stand. Discussion? On page two, item... Is it four or zero? We haven't voted. We okay. said the motion no. was made and seconded. We're now in the discussion phase. Page two... Alphabet zero comes LMN OP. It's an O, not a zero. The word um, also discuss refund due from the New York City and the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania housing authorities for overpayments. I think it is the Westmoreland, Pennsylvania housing authority. Okay. Not the uh, yeah, okay. Harrisburg, Virginia. <laughs> Okay. That's my only, my only um, pickup. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. The motion was made. For, so that's the uh, correction. Okay. Motion as seconded as corrected. All in favor? Right. Three, zero, one. You get that back, right? Yeah. Motion was made by Mr. Santo, seconded by Mr. Lockwood, 301. Ms. Donahue abstained. Okay, next item on the agenda is to uh, authorization to sign bills and documents that have adequate support and documentation have been reviewed and approved by the administrator. Is that right? Yep. And the, and the warrants are in your packet? 
Mm -hmm. so if you look at them, you'll see some things lined up. There's a, a segregation between payroll and and other other uh, expenses. And then at the end of the meeting, if you brought it, you bring any checks to sign. Yes, I did. Yeah. At the end of the meeting, like the selectmen do, we will review those invoices and sign the checks if they're with them as approved by the administrator. In the past, Jane, while well, you're looking through those, in the past, Jane, the, um, the members signed the checks that were presented to them and they weren't necessarily warrants or uh, vouchers appended to them. So we established the practice of all bills that come before the, through the authority will be signed off by the maintenance people or whoever received the goods as having been received in good order. And then Jackie reviews them for propriety and that those things were signed off on and then she approves them before they're presented to us. And we have a written policy to that effect? Yeah, we did that a few months ago. We put it in the minutes and it's part of the policy. We May I get a copy of the written policies? We will be. Or are we not? What should I say? We will be compiling the policy, but it's not compiled. We have to, we have to compile the policies. What we did when we first got in here because of DHCD and there were no policies and then the ones we looked at were old, out of date, 1990s and some of them were no longer legal. We, we kind of like suspended the policies and have been developing travel and personnel and other policies as we, as we go along in the minutes. So we, we need to compile them. My understanding is that they need to be in writing. Absolutely. And, and I also read somewhere in the minutes where the Executech, or well, maybe that was in the corrective action report that you sent to DHCD on October 15th, right. that she was working on 10 policies. I understand Executech is no longer with us, correct? Right. She would, they were the interim management in between the departure of the previous executive director and the arrival of our administrator. So in between, we had this right. temporary. Understand that part. Just want to make sure that we got the, that we got the ten policies that she was drafting, and that we yeah we will be looking at them and approving right. them. Right, reviewing them and and altering them or suggesting improvements to them because some of them were just from other authorities. Well, they were non-existent. This may or may not apply. So. All right, so very good. Thank you, Board. All right. Uh, item B, so maybe make a motion on those. Are you two looking at them over? The chair will accept the motion on the bills. I, I just comment that we should try to get out of here by 1.30 because the residents have to set up for their, their um, Valentine. Is it a Valentine's party? Right, and then We'll try to accommodate that. And then we have other meetings to go to, and we'll come back to your party. Thank you. So, do I have a motion on the? So be a motion accepted. On motion by Mr. Santos. Mm -hmm. Second. Seconded by Mr. Lockwood. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Four zero zero. You got that. Well, you got the names, Baba. Mm -hmm. oh, you do? All right, good. All right. In a code. All right, and that would include. <laughs> so I'll make a, a motion to approve, to approve the warrants and the accounts payable warrants, too, that are included here. If we could make that one motion. So let's list these things. Yeah. Make it one motion. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, so be it. I'll make the motion that we approve the infrastructure. No, 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 no. Item C. Item C. Warrants, I'm sorry. warrants and accounts payable. Right. Motion by Mr. Santos. Yep. Do I have a second? Okay, Mr. Lockwood seconds. Discussion all in favor? Well, just a, a bit of discussion. Um, Go ahead. <clears throat> on the, um, the bills that we're paying, um, that they don't seem to be that many of them. But, and that's a good thing, I suppose. <laughs> But um, I think I read somewhere in another set of minutes that um, when we make a purchase, the purchase, the, the purchaser is actually signing off on the receipt of those goods, mm -hmm. and the payment is being made by 
the authority. Separate, yeah, so we segregated a, that function. Very good. I Thank mentioned you. that before. We, in the past, bills were coming in for paint and whatever, and we, we said, let's, we want whoever receipts that at the maintenance section, signs off on the paint, the supplies, the, all the work that was done on the vehicle, that it was signed off as, as being done satisfactorily. They turn that paperwork into the office and the administrator reviews it to her satisfaction before it's presented for us. Very good. Thank you, sir. So motion makes it seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Okay, we have Mr. DeFelice, Mr. Guy Campina is not here. Do you mind if we discuss this with, without Mr. Guy Campina? We had a, uh, we got a, the last sewer bill we got included prior sewer bills in the tune of, I think, 40 something thousand dollars plus interest and penalties and demands. It went up to 45. So we, um, we got in touch with them and wrote to them and asked for forgiveness and we went to the Board of Selectmen and they, kind of like we're concerned about setting a precedent with, with forgiveness of just the interest in the prince and interest in the demand fees not the uh, not the sewer bills themselves but but we will be paying those bills no problem but we're, we're waiting on as a separate issue we're waiting on uh, uh, subsidy payments from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts which to date almost eight months into the fiscal year, we've received only $10,000 of our 70 odd thousand dollar payment. So we're looking for another 34 or 40,000 to get us up to speed through February. We've been in contact with them. The complication there is the fact that there was no budget approved for fiscal 13 and they, that was a requirement. And so they're working out internally on how they'll go forward approving a 14 budget when there was no 13 approved budget, although now they have the 13 actuals. So that is a backdrop on paying the bill. But in, in as we were dealing with the sewer department, Mr. Campina talked to Ms. Hickey, the administrator, and indicated to them that they would be willing to take on the responsibility of servicing our pumping station, which is on this property, right, the yes. sewer, sewer pump at direct costs and um, we originally th thought that was sounded like a good deal there would be no markup it would be their cost but then when the when we brought this up with the selectmen a couple of them indicated that we should be uh, be clarified is is it internal labor that's doing it or are they just contracting out with another another uh, contractor and passing the bill on to us so we just wanted to talk to mr campina and clarify that because the statute says that we are authorized to work with the town and they shall provide services if we request them. The question is, is the cost reasonable? And, and, and would it be an annual maintenance or would it be if we have a, a plug up and it needs it is backed up and we have to have a service, that is, will it cover that too and it will still always be at cost? You have an understanding of that so you could, if you'd like to speak up on that. I was on, and my understanding is that Mr. Campina's uh, crew, the work laborers, would provide the service on a year to year, a yearly maintenance service to um, for all direct costs associated with with his department and indirect costs associated with uh, supplying the employees at whatever you know whatever rate the town is paying these gentlemen to do a yearly uh, maintenance on our pump house. We, we do, at this time, do not have a maintenance schedule for, so this would really help, I think, keep uh, the equipment that needs to be updated or anything that coming down the pike, they'll be able to notify us. And I thought it was a good, good deal. I have a question for so Mike, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. So the sewer pump station that's on this property is not part of the town's pumping system? No. No, no, it, when you mean not part of. It's not part of the town sewer system. Like, yeah, no, it's separate, yeah. and it's, we, we are responsible for that pump house maintenance, the warehousing authority is. That's unusual. That's yeah. unusual in my so experience. That's why I'd like to clarify that's that. That's why I asked. doesn't sound. I think yeah. they're reviewing, I right know that to they, me. There's a lot of pump houses that are on. Right. Private property. Private property, as is. Right on Commonwealth property, if you will, and it seems a little odd, but. Yeah, so that's what we I think we need, yeah, clarification. We need clarification on that. 
and then we Seems. can get the answers and decide. Like they would be doing that anyway if it's part of the oh, if it is, if it's they part be. of the sewer system. Yeah, right. Right. I can Absolutely. understand the selectman's policy is very they're very difficult with abatements for any part of the fee or associated you know, you might get a one time forgiveness for, mm -hmm. for but they're a pretty Policy is pretty stiff as yeah. far as granting abatements and setting precedents. Mm -hmm. So, okay, go ahead. Lift Thank stations. you. Me? The it's lift, lift stations station. right. that are lifted yeah. up yeah. from the sewer yeah. line yeah. Yeah. to the pump it's station right. to the to the uh, to the town. Yeah, it's still part of the system. Then, yeah. It belongs yeah. to the uh, uh, back along housing authority. Housing authority. The pumping stations. Okay. They pick it up, they pump it up, and they push it up. Just, just, just go ahead. To make a comment to that, and to you, Miss Donahue, that um, when they did do Project Two, they took out the Agawam Village pump station and replaced it with a gravity lift station. So they never, I, I don't, I did not see any communication where they came in and asked where the Housing Authority to do that or to change that. So. That's what, right, that's why I don't right. think they need it, but right. that's okay. That's probably what Mr. Campina can clarify for yeah. us. Great. There are lots of places where they do need to put in the gravity lifts to get the sewage to where it needs to go because of the elevation. So um, at least that's my experience. So we'll get some. Okay. We'll, Let me ask Mr. Henry Campina for you. Clarify that. Uh, do you do you know from history how the authority's been handling the servicing of that? Station on Red. We've been servicing and calling service people in to service that. Outsiders. Just only if they. So you call yeah. them. You call them when there was a backup or a plug in. Right. So there was right. no. We had no agreement this, with any service. And any really, there's been some quite a bit of backups on that pump. They had to put on a new pump. I think last year. On that. So that was all done privately. We hired. A, right. We hired yes. somebody. Yes. We could probably. We got the key thing is if they can do that kind of work mm -hmm. for us, mm -hmm. right. Right. and we're free of having to hire somebody so else, that. that'll be good. Well, that, and, yeah. and if they can do it for a reasonable price, that's even better, or nothing is even yeah. better. That's how the conversation started because I felt like it was really important that we put in maintenance, yearly maintenance plans for all of our equipment. And so I, when he came in to speak with me, um, I said, "Do you know anybody that would do this?" And he said, "We would do it." And that's how I brought to the board <clears throat> for them to extend to the selectmen um, the request that we would pay direct and all associated indirect costs at, at the cost that it costs the town. So. so in the main interest of the time, uh, until Mr. Campina comes we'll here, we're just coffee. speculating so we yeah, could table so it until right. the next. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we'll table it so we get an answer to clarify it and then we can decide whether to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the with the sewer the commission is. Thank you. Okay, next item. Infrastructure report by the chairman of the infrastructure committee, Mr. Lockwood. We have a package in front of us in our yeah, it was we, a we ex extensive uh, report. A schematic design submission from uh Novel Architects. Uh, Taking a look at it, um, the full version. Um, had a couple of issues, a couple of things, but I just point out to the uh, committee for the response. Um, they were asking for um, an exclusive window specification uh, for locking windows. Um, and in general, I don't think that's a good. Thing to be doing. Um, we need to keep keep the process competitive. Um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, secondly, I'm not sure that those are, um, are the windows we ought to be pursuing. Um, we have a fairly limited amount of limited number of windows, and then that we're talking about, and the cost per unit uh, for installation doesn't vary significantly from the cheapest to the most expensive. Um, the, and the, so I think, what, what, do we, what do we have, four windows per unit, something like that? No. Five? No. Six. Six. Six, eight, eight. what eight. is it? Five, six. Okay. Is it eight windows altogether? Is it uniform? Two doubles, front and back. 
kitchen. Six, oh, and I'm, I'm counting the doors. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. The two doors. It's a six. Six, window. Window. Uh, six uh, windows. Okay. Kitchen, living room, bedroom. Double bones on the, in the uh, bedrooms. Double bones. Six windows, and two windows. doors. Yeah. Two windows side by side. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But they're all the same. So. Okay. In any case, um, the um, the cost of better windows uh, might might pay for itself in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of durability of the windows, uh, the ones we're replacing now are 50 odd years old. The ones we're talking about replacing them with have maybe a 15 year life. Um, and what are the other alternatives? Well, something with a 20, 30 year life. So something that we should have a discussion with Nolte about. And, and, and would this be a modification to the to the current contract that we have with? We Nolte? don't have one. They're going out. They're no, going they're, to. They're, this they're is a schematic go submission. They this have is not. their bid. They're going to go out to what? bid. The state will be going out to bid to do. This is a schematic design submission. Hmm. They haven't put anything out to bid. The, the state will be going out to bid after the. These are their high architects. To, to do the renovations at Agawam Village. They did building one a few years ago and didn't do the roof. Now they agreed to do building, building two. two plus the roof on building one plus one or two handicapped access, the accessibility units. When this is all worked out, back and forth, we've had meetings with architects here, both, both their in-house architect at DHCD and the state hired architect, Nault Associates, to work out the, um, the, the our desires, and Bill's been a big help in getting them to upgrade from minimum standards to a more reasonable, responsible, and long, longer uh, life upgrade. But uh, I would agree with Bill, based on his conversation, that we don't know who Harvey is or whether their windows meet any kind of standards or Lockwood Lockheed windows were yeah. installed, and they're recommending Harvey, but I would agree they're a new, new they shouldn't be specifying an, an, an exclusive product to the state when you're going out to be going out to bid. They should be looking for, set the specs and looking for comparables. More importantly, we should be looking for the performance specs on the windows. Right. We should be looking for a DP50 window. We should be looking for a, a U factor of 0.3. Um, so, either one of these windows can meet that, um, um, but what happens with the vinyl windows, and these are both vinyl windows, they, they do expand and contract a little bit more than some other types of windows over the course of time. Mm -hmm. Over the course of time, that expansion and contraction leads to uh, the lessening of their performance. I have Harvey windows in my house. Do you like them? Very good. Who do you have? Harvey. Yeah, she has Harvey windows. Yeah. Very good window. Harvey who though? Just, sorry. Is it Paul Harvey or some other Harvey? <laughs> and the rest of the story? No, and now you have the rest of the story. Harvey the windows. They're a local manufacturer. Yeah. Well, they're, they're a regional manufacturer. Yeah. They have a warehouse in, uh, yeah. in Dartmouth, amongst other places. Um, and and the, uh, the vinyl windows, it's a, it's a reason. We'll get the best ones we can get for it, the right It price. might very well be that um, they've already plugged in. DHCD might have already done bids and, and got these as, a, as well, meeting the, statewide the, I'm sure this came in as an alternate, uh, or a, as meeting standards. You know, so yeah. Not a problem. But I don't think we should get them exclusive. No. So should we specify 30 year rather than 50 year? Could we do that? Is we can ask for it. They will come kick back and say this is what it's going to cost. Yeah. It's outside. It's going to yeah. raise the budget. That sort of stuff. I think this is sort so of discussion we have. Negotiation on thing. Okay. So um, with that, rather than go with this motion as proposed under FA, would you make a make a motion that we respond to Nalt and, uh, and, and indicate what you are looking for and have them give us some feedback? I will make a motion that. Contact them and discuss discuss the window exclusivity and, and in, in general in the uh, the uh, life and so forth. There's a couple of other items that I came, came across here okay, in, in terms of their um, 
Secondly, with siding, uh, um, I think there was uh, some cheaper ways to go with siding that were equally um, beneficial, uh, if not more beneficial. Uh, they've, um, they've specified cedar shingles pre-dipped pre by the most expensive manufacturer I could <laughs> with, with, in the most expensive way you could buy them. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah. So, um, so I think we can... on some things and... Uh, yeah, and you, you expect to see a, a kind of an even level right. of quality, not, not like not this. this. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's also a subject for some discussion. Good, would you? Yeah. Um, thirdly, um, they have specified chip flooring, a broadcast epoxy chip flooring for the bathrooms. My experience is that doesn't work very well on concrete and works horribly on wood. Um, so what happens is once it, you drop in a heavy object on it, it, cr it cracks it, and you're, you're all done. Um, and that's from the likelihood in, in these units. It's a likelihood any place. Yeah. Um, if, you, if it's a, adhered to a concrete substrate, then um, it has a better chance of performance, but um, performing. What do you recommend? Uh, oh, have you thought about it? Uh, we can use a, we can use a vinyl uh, sheet vinyl, um, which ha has limitations. We can use a VCT, which has a different source of limitations. But, yeah. Um, it's not. A, this is not a cheap product, and it, I don't consider it to be a good product. Yeah. So okay. But these are. Uh, uh, anything else? Um, see uh, no no th those are three that um, okay I mean there are a couple other minor things but um, I'm not for the discussion all right so we, we have a motion on the floor to authorize bill to communicate with Nault, preferably in writing so we got a record of it that you've raised these mm -hmm. issues and you'd like them to respond to them so that we can take a take further action to vote on their uh, recommendations I'll second the motion Right. I'll make the motion. Second it, I mean. Mr. Lockwood made the motion, Mr. Santos seconded it. Any any uh, further discussion? With that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to abstain. Three. We have enough information at this three point. Three zero one. Ms. Donahue abstained. Okay, Mr. Uh, Human Resource Committee, Mr. Santos. We're at this point um, advertising for maintenance positions. Um, we have some um, applications in the office which I'll allow Jackie to speak on. Uh, our process has been that each member gets a copy of the um, resumes. And we number the one, one, two, three, and four, whatever that number is that we decide on. And those with the same amount of numbers, but say we get one person that has four, that's the top. We'll make them on the top of the list and we'll send letters to those and Jackie will, and we'll interview them. Um, and then we'll do the process of screening and we'll make an appointment to them through the letters of uh, coming for our interview before the board and the uh, recipients. Now, would you like to say anything on that, Jackie? We've got- Closing um, date is, is, is Friday. It's Friday, um, the 22nd, 4.30, I mean, 4 o'clock. And we have, I, I think, five to seven applications right mm -hmm. now, five to seven resumes. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are people that have called in and said they were gonna bring their five, so mm -hmm. I expect a couple more. So you can tell them that each member will get a copy. I will make sure each member gets a copy. I will uh, copy them and then send them out to everybody. Yeah, we'll have and a time make the appointments whenever you guys get back to me. Okay, we'll have a timetable in which yep. to get them back to you. Okay. Well, just to, just to clarify, the protocol we used when we recruited an administrator was similar to that. We advertised, we got 30 or, 30 or so resumes. Every member got a package yep. with all the resumes, and there was a list of all of them. And then we independently reviewed the applications and scored, scored them and ranked them and to independently provided the administrator with that list. And then those that received four re, uh, 
recommendations to interview, they were all scheduled to be interviewed. And then if there's three, we can set the protocol. If there's three people recommend interview, we can interview those. And then set up preliminary interviews to those, those that got three or four check marks to be interviewed. If, and that will save us the trouble of having to meet, to sit together to review applications. And all the questions will be. And then we'll then when we get beyond that, we'll then we'll develop a set of uh, standard questions for the preliminary interview. And all the notes that we do go into a file. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yeah. Um, I, I read the notes about, and I saw the advertisement for the policy. And I, with all due respect to Mr. Santos, and having been set up as the chairman of the hiring and human resources committee. My understanding is that those duties and responsibilities should fall directly to the executive director and that the housing authority has the authority itself, does not have the opportunity to screen that all the hiring decisions are made by the executive director. That's my understanding of how the process should work according to the information that I received from DHCD. Um, I have it right here. Would you like me to read it? You can read it, but go ahead. And well, this goes back to the policy questions about personnel and hiring policies, and where are we on those policies and doing things in accordance with mm -hmm. this. I mean, I'm, I just want to make sure that we're doing everything right. I don't want anybody to come back and question the fact that the housing authority themselves were involved in day-to-day -day business of the executive director. And I think it's a very, you know, that, that can be a slippery slope. And um, it says here in my resource and responsibilities, the Local Housing Authority Board of Commissioners in Massachusetts, which I'm going to give to Jackie to make copies for Mr. Lockwood and Mr. Santos. I'm assuming you must have a copy of it yourself at some point. The executive director responsible for all aspects of employment of the staff. That means hiring. We get to say not much and we don't get to interact with the staff themselves even after they're hired. That's her responsibility. We have to give her clear direction on what we want in our personnel policy, which right. is why I asked earlier what, what the status right. of the personnel policy but is. I would just, in, in response to that, I would just indicate that you, you, you need to understand that this is a small housing authority. And in a small housing authority like this, and like it was before, housing authorities, with small housing authorities and with, with a part-time or a full-time executive director and nobody else, and they have full authority for hiring, purchasing, paying bills, everything. There's, there's no system of internal controls, no segregation of duties, because everything is delegated to the um, the director. So I would say notwithstanding the guidelines from DHCD, which may or may not pertain or uh, be in the best interest of all housing authorities and larger housing authorities, they have different departments, they have payroll, they have accounts payable, and so forth. But under Chapter 121B, Section 7, it says the housing authority shall elect from among its members a chairman, vice chairman, and may employ a council and an executive director, we employ a, an administrator who shall, the director shall be the ex officio um, secretary of authority and a treasurer who may, may be a member of the authority. In such other offices, agents, and employees as it deems necessary and proper, and shall determine their qualifications, duties, and compensation. So this board determines her duties, qualifications, and compensation, notwithstanding what DHCD well, says as that. guidelines. I, I don't so, disagree with that, Bob. I so don't. then it says, and the board may delegate to one or more of its members, agents, or employees, such powers and duties as it deems necessary and proper for carrying out the actions determined upon it. So notwithstanding DHCD, I've had my dealings with DHCD, I cut my eye teeth on Housing Authority, Boston, Cambridge, Brookline, Brockton. Many shortcomings and shortfalls with them. I come from a, a, a different uh, 
what should I say? Genre. I'm old Genre. school. Old school. I believe there's God, there's people, there's voters, there's electorate. They elect us. We get elected, and I designate you know, to a, a a bureaucrat those duties, duties and functions, not authority and responsibility. So, um, with that, I would say we will decide the duties and functions of the director consistent with sound internal control practices. And we're not interfering with the hiring. She'll be on the, she'll be on the committee to review the applications and so forth. But we can, we can be under the statute, the people that employ people for the housing authority. And they like to, they like to not read these sections of the law when they start implementing and calling up and telling you what you can and can't do. I've had these discussions with DHCD for years, and the, 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 the director or the administrator is accountable to the board, and we're accountable to the voters. And may I add, we do not interfere, I do not, and yeah, the board we members interfere, interfere with the daily operations yeah. of our committee. Well, I didn't suggest that anybody did. I no, just I'm wanted just to make sure that we that don't rule. go down yeah. that slippery no, no, slope. No, no, I'm just because informing you that we don't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very good to hear. I'm no, glad to yeah. hear that. No, we, we yeah. set policy. We don't do Well, policy. that's why I went, that's why yeah. I started with the policies. Because, again, I think we need to get the basic policies in writing so that our executive right. director has very clear guidance and that we have documented exactly what is what we're doing. And I understand that we have to turn those into DHCD for them yeah. to, to review. And that's why I'm just saying we need to be right. we need to be fundamentally on solid ground, Bob. I'm not contesting what you say. I just want to be careful that we don't go down the slippery <coughs> slope. We need to give Miss Hickey the tools to do her job, the direction to do her job, and we have to let her do it as in so much as she is possibly able to do it with the small yeah. authority that we have. You can do that. We have great authority. That's my point. We have great authority. What ha what has happened in places is they turned over all authority. They've even created a contract with the executive director, and they've, they've given up all, abdicated all their authority. And then, then what you've had in Just many small authorities well. is boards that see no evil, hear no evil, and rubber stamp everything, and they don't know what happens. But then when the stuff hits the fan and things happen, the DACD comes in, and you know what they say? Where was the board? That's right. Yeah. That's what, that's what so their letter says. Where I'm was the board? Them, so I want to make sure I'm the board is there. The board is here. <laughs> With policies in yeah. writing that give clear direction. That's my point. Yeah. Good point. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad we had that conversation. You <laughs> <laughs> need to. All right. So the good member puts his pen down before he signs anything, right? Absolutely. In <laughs> anyway, Absolutely. what's next? So, where were we? So, are we all right with that policy of us screening? Jackie would obviously be part of the, she's on all committees. Because we have, unlike other authorities, we'll have a budget budget committee, a finance committee, an internal com audit committee, a compliance committee, all those kinds of committees where the board can do its job and oversee and monitor the finances and operations of the authority as opposed to be come to a meeting once a month and say, sign this, there's nothing, I have nothing to tell you, sign these contracts. Oh, well, I don't think that's the kind of direction that we would ever want to go. No, like I said, I'd just like to I've see the wheels that. on the bus, on the bus, I've yeah. seen that before the bus many, starts to go many, down many, the road. Many. I've seen that in more places than I haven't. Because we are starting from scratch, and the letter that we got from DHCD, that you've sent in the corrective action report plan, needs a little more meat on oh, its sure. bones and follow-up. That's why I was Absolutely, asking about Miss yeah. Lunar and Executech and where the policies yeah. are that we paid them to do, so. Well, we paid them to stop the bleeding and monitor and manage and apply for back un unapplied for our grants and funds and a lot of things, so. in their DACD's report scratches the surface as to what, what the problems that we've encountered before and after they did their visit and what Jackie's finding now. So um, anyway, I'm glad we had that this conversation. So with that, we'll, we have a motion to follow the same protocol basically as before. 
recruiting mm -hmm. a maintenance yeah, man who mean. will be supervised by the ministry. All right. That's a motion by you? Yes. A motion to accept the Human Resource Committee report. And second. In the, in the, in the, uh, I'm sorry for this. Motion, motion by Mr. Santos, seconded by Ms. Donahue. Discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. You're welcome. 4-0. I, 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 I'd like to go back because I don't think I took a motion to accept the Infrastructure Committee report. I yes, you did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We, we, I motioned yeah, We made a motion to authorize, authorize yeah. him to yes. do something, but we didn't accept the oh. report. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So oh. I make a motion. I move we accept the report. report. Ms. Donahue made a motion to accept the Infrastructure Committee report. Did you spell everything and right? There's a second by Mr. I Mr. Mr. Santos. And it was... All in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So carry. So we've covered everything with that. Um, we got a few minutes. I'd like to we got, go to the administrator's report. Is that next? Yeah. Just right. it's quickly. It's a, um, a status of change. I mean, the heat and the hot water redwood project. We're in the final stages of closeout. We will be, as soon as we, um, we're waiting for one more documentation to be signed off by DHCD, and then we can um, we can um, get a uh, final walkthrough, and that would include um, a member from, you know, out, we're in housing authority, um, DHCD, which would be either Tom Mulvey or Leo Cote, the project managers, and the contractor, and the engineer. From DHCD. From D we just have to wait for uh, DHCD's final send-off right off of the final two change orders in their request from oh, the the oh no i did i didn't i didn't you do not have a copy of my report okay. Okay. no so nobody she's does reading. i'm just reading off uh, you know. doesn't work right work. um <laughs> just all these other papers i thought it might be here somewhere <laughs> um funding for two projects came in um the twelve thousand eight hundred dollars we received from dhcd for unit turnovers and we are um, uh, contacted DHCD. We're on the same page on how we get that money back from them, and how we are able to spend it. And we, we are um, in the process of waiting for the Plymouth County um, Commission, who we will be buying our um, appliances from in the future at a discounted rate using Chapter Three procurement. Um, they they do all of that for us. We then just have to order how many we need, which is really good for us. And you know, um, so we're waiting for that. They'll be done in two weeks, and we'll be able to um, finish our unit turnovers because we have to replace some of our appliances and some of the units. And um, then um, we have a thirty thousand uh, dollar grant that came through for stoop replacement in Avalon Village. So we also have begun. I've talked to um, Bill Miller and um, Leo Cote. Uh, I'm sorry, Bill Miller, on how to proceed. And uh, one of the things they've suggested, because it's close to twenty-five thousand, they have a twenty-five thousand dollar and below cap, where the housing authority would be responsible for any any um, project under twenty-five thousand. But because it's right over, they are gonna they're going to um, do a quick. We're going to use a house doctor, which is who their engineers. They have these engineering <coughs> people that they call them house doctors. So we don't have to procure our own engineer. It's already procured for us. We will maybe have to procure. The job, I haven't heard word back from DHCD yet. They may just say, because it's, this will be done two times by them already, once in building one and now in building two, but the other buildings we can just use their same specs and get them worked on via that. So I'm waiting to hear back from Bill Farmer, who's in charge of the projects at DHCD. So that's on that. And then applications to local grants. Do sure. Want, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you want us to? stop you if we have a question about something Please. or do you want us to wait until the end? Um, you can stop me. But I talk rather fast, so do you, do you have a question? We all do, okay. don't we? Um, yes, I do. I have a question about the stoops. Um, yeah. I noticed that we've, we've also asked the CPA for yeah. stoop money. Can you explain the difference between those two, or did they cross in the mail? I, I noticed that the, it, the it, dates were quite close. Right. They, it did cross. This just came in. We didn't know if we were going to be approved for that, and I also didn't want to lose the window of putting in a CPA application, but what had happened with the CPA application, the um, 
in the goodness of the Community Preservation Committee, they decided to add on ramps um, to the to three different units that would need ramps in Agawam. And because of that, in, in time-wise, I didn't wasn't didn't quite I knew that there was an ADA compliant regulation that would not involve CP, CPA would just dis, it would disqualify that as um, a CPA request for funding and so because of that I they called me and asked me about the ramps I was like yeah yeah and I hung up the phone didn't give it another thought and realized that um, they you can't do that with CPA funding Okay. So and what happened was that was removed and only two of our CPA re uh, requests are going to go on the warrant for town meeting uh, re uh, approval. This time? This time meeting, April town meeting, which would be one for um, asbestos remediation in um, Avalon Village and also for a plumbing update in one of the buildings um, because we Thank have you. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, and then also for AD make piece application came out, I'm going to put in a request for emergency lighting, not emergency lighting, hallway lighting in the public hallways of Redwood. There are eight buildings, and we have two separate hallway, hall, public hall areas in each building. So I would like to do a, a more energy efficient upgrade with that. So we're, we're requesting that from AD make piece at this time. Emergency lighting, we are in the process of co collecting quotes from our local um, local uh, businesses for emergency. We do have one on deck so far. I had two others. Both of them haven't showed up, so I'm going to pursue as many as I can so we can get two other quotes, and we'll have our three quotes. Right now, it stands at the, the one quote received is 2200 For two uh, buildings, Agamorn Village and Redwood Village, to upgrade the emergency, to get emergency lighting, and um, emergency light combination packages with the lighted emergency sign. Um, to date, in our wait list, um, oh, wait, on, oh, the, on the plumbing upgrade, yep. <coughs> I read the application. It says in, in the uh, project name, it says building one replacement of underground plumbing. And then on the two, why is this project needed? It says Along with all of the other Agawam Village rehabilitation project, this project, this project will rehabilitate the underground plumbing. Am I right or wrong in saying that the plumbing is not underground? It's underground. under the building okay. in the crawl space. Oh, then that it's was in my the basement. Yeah. It's in the basement. Okay. It's in the so crawl we, space. Will this to... this won't jeopardize the article, will it? Saying that it's underground versus under, un, in the crawl space. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Good and I'm, I was also curious about the, the the guidelines that DCHD sent us about what CPA funds can and can't be used for. Mm -hmm. And this, you don't think this is maintenance? No. No, oh, no, this is no, a no. Series. no. Yeah. I read those guidelines. Did you read well. the guidelines? I, I, I thought that was. Um, I thought it was clear. I thought it was clear as mud. <laughs> well. It's an emergency. Upgrading of dangerous plumbing services. Yes. I think we fall under that definition. Dangerous. Yeah, I, Sorry that you have dangerous plumbing. Yeah, we have a safety issue here. We, we absolutely do. All right, good. Thank you. I read that. Just so you understand. Yes, I do appreciate the clarification. Okay. okay. It's hard to just look at the papers yeah. and no, not understand absolutely. the context, which is why I'm asking the questions. And they themselves, DHCD came down when we put, we, we've, we, just so you understand, <laughs> When we went over the CIP, which I think I included in your packet, the, you did. Um, Thank you. They, they came down when I requested it. They said, Jackie, we have 56 extra thousand dollars. I said, great. We can do, and this is how it began. We can do the underneath plumbing of the building. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay. So they came down. That was on Monday. They came on Thursday and they came back and they said, wow, you know, we really, this is something we need Excellent. to have done. Mm -hmm. And then I said, great. We're going to go back and ask for money from CPA for another building. And we may have enough because yeah. of the way they price it out at DHCD. We may have, they may find another more money to do another building. I don't right. want to belabor this, but I don't know. In this building, what fifty some odd years old is? Yeah, I don't know if there's ever been any uh, plumbing remodeling plumbing no. in all of that time. So it's got to be 
Yeah, I don't think it's really. Uh, they, they were the ones that recognized how old it was. It hasn't been updated in over Can 65 years, so. <laughs> Maybe. Um, but you're too late to file. I missed yeah. the deadline yeah. from my house. So, yeah. Okay. okay more <laughs> now back to oh, back to your question about uh, whether the plumbing is outdoor is um, jeopardized by language. Yeah. Uh, has the article been uh, typed? Probably voted? not on the warrant yet. No, Probably it has not. not there. Yet. So, so we, let, we, it's we, time to get. It we have time to correct okay. that. Okay. Right. Good. All right. To under floor instead okay. of underground. Okay. Yeah. Crawl space. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, um, I, too, I too read the, the mm. DHCD guidelines and talked to DHCD council and AC attorney general and stuff. And they, there's no question. We just don't want it to come up on town meeting floor yeah. and have oh, somebody no. challenge. No. Oh, 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 thank you. Somebody will. Thank you so much yeah. for the clarification. This does qualify. Yeah. This does qualify. And I, one of the thoughts I had is, is um, if we can get DHCD engineers to give us a an independent evaluation of our applications to say that they do qualify under the statute so that it's not us right. alleging sure. that it that does be or you. <laughs> but I mean, I don't have a problem with you. You're independent and objective. Yeah, although, not, there's no apparently conflict. that that came up in the selectors meeting. Did there. it? That yeah. you were on the board? Uh, no, but there should be someone other than myself. Yes, conflict yeah, of interest. There's an O on this. Yeah, but, did it's you take thing. that test? <laughs> There's a no, test. You know, I did take the test. Yeah, so I don't have a problem. And I passed. Me too. I personally have no problem with you doing it. I don't think there is a problem with you, but this, this, this people no, think like that. So third third party. If we can get a right. third party from DHCD to review mm -hmm. these and say they qualify under the CPA if, Act. If anybody that goes on nice. the CPA website, it's very interesting mm -hmm. because they link that that notification that is sent you. Yes. On the CPA website itself for the, for the state of Massachusetts, they link the Liz Hire's ruling on D because they went to DHCD to get a ruling on the CPA, this particular new addition to the CPA world. Yeah, no, no, they, they, they went to town council who went to Department of Revenue. This is Department of Revenue, uh, falls under their bailiwick. And we number number one, I didn't see the letter that was sent, so I don't know if they if it was the way I would have asked the well, question. This is something different, yeah. And number two, I didn't see the response back from DOR. I would prefer to talk to DOR because they're the overseers of this law, not D, D, uh, DHCD. And DHCD, right, clearly in the first paragraph, says, "Please note this guidance is advisory and not binding on your community." So, like all of those well, bureaucrats, they, they say, yeah. get your own town council to opine, and he right. will opine based on what DOR says. Although, I, 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 I think that. we're on good, good, good solid ground. Good, 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 good solid um, ground. Excellent. To date, um, we have actually worked diligently to count all of our applications for our wait list. This is a wait list <coughs> update. We have 1,000. 1,142 applicants to date, and they're broken down in various groups. And let me read you the groups. We have 121 elderly Wareham residents applications. We have 111 non-elderly handicapped Wareham residents. We have 111 elderly non-residents. We have 201 non-elderly handicapped non-residents. We have 202 family Wareham residents applications. We have 396 family non non-residents for a total of 1,142. Okay. Can I see the, the ad machine tape with that? Um, can, can you just read it? <laughs> 1,142. Yeah, 1,142. Somebody told me there was nobody waiting for housing in Wareham. How could I have gotten that message from somebody? Seriously. Well, you didn't get a responsible answer. You got one of these off the top of the head things. With it that I guess I did, yeah. didn't I? because I knew quite well that the and answer was different. I thought when I got here, there's no Section 8 housing, but there was. But anyway, we, um, we are um, in the process of, of continually looking to the freeze from uh, regulation. We were gonna, from DHCD. From DHCD in order to freeze it so we can actually um, make sure that there are people, whoever's, we're going to put, clean up our list. We're going to call and contact every single person on this list to make sure. I know from the time I've been here on that those people 
thing I've done my uh, I was going to ask you how far back does this list date I mean what are the what is the oldest application for housing that you still have in your pile 1965 November, November 5th 2005 <laughs> they don't expire after a certain time no they do not expire uh, unless gotta, they contact us and they, they ask us and, and just so you understand um, it is it is recommended by DHCD that we clean the list every three years so we're starting a new and we'll do it every three years so after. just so you know there's a lot of people waiting for your units so you're lucky to be there <laughs> we're lucky to have you <laughs> that's right we just want to, again I just want to remind everybody um, over the last three weeks in maintenance we've worked 90 hours just on maintenance crew alone not our additional snow shovelers snow removal people um, 90 hours alone in snow removal in the last three weeks so it's uh, taken a tremendous amount of of uh, resources from our men to they have to stop all of our calls that people call in and we get we fit them in in the betweens and we're trying to fit them in the, in the betweens of the snow removal this winter that is you know exceptional I'd like to comment on that if I may, Mr. Chairman um, I have never seen or saw or witnessed a small crew along with the administrator shoveling snow making sure our residents are safe and don't be afraid to say it jackie and the crew uh, you you need kudos and thank i'm going to say that you. to you that, uh, they, the residents have been very helpful that's what i want yes, to say thank you so much for all their help thank you so much we we are in the process of redwood's yes, different than ad warm so redwood is difficult in in the sense where we have to inconvenience them more because the plow truck has to go all the way around the U. And sometimes E and R E and R F buildings are <coughs> worst as far as the sunlight and, and trying to get the, the snow removed from that particular area. And so we've had to, you know, we may have inconvenienced you folks a little bit, but we're gonna work on it and definitely we'll have a better plan hopefully by, by next winter. No, we will have a better plan by next winter. So um, and I just wanted to bring that to the board's attention. Um, and I wanted to also bring our vacant unit issue. Um, again, we have three vacant units. We, we did offer the one, oh, uh, I'm sorry, Agawam Village has three. Two of those units have to be saved for the uh, displacement of people for the ADA compliance. So as soon as we get the word on the, the, the project is out to bid, we will inform the tenants on the units that they will be displaced from. We have two units that are gonna be ready and operational in the next two weeks for them. So um, we- so They'll be relocated. They will be relocated, and those two units will be done over by DHCD interiorly. So I can't let those go to our list. We have one unit, we just asked a woman. She just denied it on Friday. She wants to stay with her family. So we have one more unit open, and um, we will, um, uh, get get that in process very, by tomorrow we're going to reach out to another person um then units we have four units we had one just open up again so we have four total in redwood that are open two of the units are bottom floor units two of the units are upstairs units the two bottom floor units have been taken for we are um we have to take two residents that are in redwood that have doctor's notes and have applied over quite for quite a long time to be removed from an upstairs down to a downstairs so they will be happening this week. That would still leave their two units open to be cleaned and, and inspected and redone over. And then we will have um, those other two additional upstairs units. We already have one woman who is going to be taking one of them, and we haven't. We'll go we'll get another one too. So hopefully we'll have those two two two, two empty units that are upstairs that are in the works right now to be completed. Um, one one was really in very bad shape. Um, it has been completely done. We just have to do the, we have to actually do the whole floors over again, that the units were uh, destroyed on the inside after the other previous tenants left. So, but we're in a good, really good spot. So I just wanted to bring that to you. Tenants account receivable. We, um, we, had, we had four tenants that are, um, had a serious delinquency. Three of them have been contacted and are working on, tour, on um, repaying back their debt to the to the warm housing authority so we're in good spots there one um has not responded verbally so i sent her a 30-day notice to quit usually that will bring them that will bring them in and this particular unit woman will be responding i'll give her 30 days and then we'll go from there um then um 
other than that, we've had a couple of, I just wanted to bring to the tenants uh, and, and let you understand the PHA network which handles our tenant. Um, unfortunately, and um, this, this is stemming from previous to um, us, myself being here December 2nd, they were, um, it was a, a couple of very complicated questions regarding how they handle tenant accounts receivable. So we've had, we are now in the process of every month sending out statements to our tenants. And unfortunately, some of the mistakes are on Wareham Housing Authority's t table. So we are um, currently working with a few tenants to make sure that this won't happen to them again, that we clean up the mess that was uh, there from um, from the previous administrative staff, that the staffing that went on with Wareham Housing Authority. So we are in, we are working towards cleaning PHA up. So, yeah. And then, um, a training, I just want to let you know that on Friday, February 22nd, I will be in a training called um, Boot Camp for Small Projects. So those are the under $25,000 ones. I am familiar with the procurement process, but I thought that it would be really better for me to go in and learn from DHCD again on the Housing Authority side of DHCD for the small boot camps. So I feel like it's well worth it and it's local okay. in time. Okay, thank you. That's it. Um, Take a motion to accept the administrator's report. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. You have the names. Donna, you stamp those. Mm -hmm. Discussion, all in favor? Mm -hmm. uh, before citizen, uh, residents' participation, I'd like to comment also that the uh, Plymouth County Sheriff's Association has been in here and they've done a wonderful job yeah. painting the community buildings at both Redwood and Agawam, and they've they plan pledge to work with us in the future, which would take a, a lot of burden off of our maintenance staff. And I'd like to thank the residents for their patience during these snowstorms. As you know, we're running out of rock salt. So isn't the world running out of rock salt. So we'll do the best we can under the circumstances. We apologize for any inconvenience, injury, or what have you. Uh, with that, I'll ask for the, any residents' participation I'd like to ask a question Go ahead. about the uh, rentals. Are we uh, take, accepting rentals from out of town? I thought it was supposed to be mainly for Wareham. Oh, you mean filling vacancies? We, we, yes. We do have a local preference in Wareham, as all, all local housing authorities do. So preference is that all Wareham residents have to be first before we can take other residents from outside our community. But we cannot stop anybody from putting in an application. Okay. Anyone else? Henry? Yeah. Okay. We're back on track with the attorney that's going to come. I've got it set up for the 25th of the month. I will supply the bus again, just like I was going to do the last time. We had a problem with storms and rest of stuff. But at Agwong Village, 11 o'clock on the 25th, the lawyer will come. So it's very important to find out what the rights you have and the rights you don't have. And this lawyer is, I send the paperwork to them, and on the 25th, she will respond. And that's at uh, Agamon. That's at Agamon, and it's at 11 o'clock. I'll have the bus here at 10 o'clock because parking is valuable at Agawam, we don't have much space. But who wants to, the bus will be out in front of this building at 10 o'clock on the 25th. So I hope to see the bunch of you and see your neighbor and tell your neighbor. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. Be before we adjourn, I'd like to ask um, Ms. Donna, you indicated she'd like to make some comments of, uh, Thank you. Well, I, I appreciate that, um, Mr. Chairman, and, and I will try to be brief. I think that first I'd like to commend you all for what you've done so far. You've, you've come very far from where we started out back in July, and I think that we've, you know, we've, we've you've really all of the things that I see that we're doing and the money that we've gotten for the health and safety initiative for the stoops, the money for the um, bake the. T the vacancies, the money to redo the units. I, I see Jackie in particular did a wonderful job of giving me a lot of homework to do. And um, I think that we've really, really progressing. Um, I just can't reiterate enough that I've 
I, I want to get back at those policies if yeah. they're available um, for us to review from Executech, um, Kate Luna. Um, I would really appreciate having them available to us for the next meeting and or I would, I would be more than willing to work closely with anybody else on the board to make sure that we get those policies up and running and in writing so that we can provide the clear direction yeah. in writing and there's no ifs, ands, or buts about what it is that we want to do and what we want our executive director to do. You, um, you, uh, you'll notice that the Commonwealth up until the last six months weren't very interested in mm. being a partner and helping us with funding. We've had this bill can support. We've had meetings with them, the architects, and they've they've changed their attitude. Hopefully, the town and the boards in the town and the selectmen have also changed their image or their their view of the of the image of the housing authority, and are more willing to cooperate with us. They have given us the, the money for the generators, and I think. DHCD architects and engineers have indicated that if we can partner with the CPA money, make peace, uh, CEDA, there's a more, there's a likelihood of, of achieving higher levels of funding from them so that we can get the properties up to speed, especially at Agawam after 50 plus years. Well, but, that would definitely definitely be a primary concern, and I'm glad we that go. we've gotten on top of that, and I'm moving forward with that. I just like to say, my, my grandfather was one of the first tenants at Agawam in 1964, mm. and he lived there until he died in 1983. Mm. So I'm very familiar with the Agawam village, and I'm also very familiar with the plight of the people on the waiting list and mm. the lack, serious lack of of uh, housing for people who qualify for this program in our community and. Um, hopefully that will be a down the road, something that we can, we can look that. into. Um, Just I, on that issue, I've already opened the doors and we've started communication. I'm going to have a conversation with Liz Heyer and Jackie and myself and some of the people in there next week. We, we, one of the things, we reached out to them and said there's a need for emergency housing here. We've had people come in here and start, talk to us at a meeting and there's no reason why this housing authority can't do more than it's doing in terms of providing housing for the residents of Wareham overall because there's a great need for it and we, I think we're all on that same page. Again, I did read your letter to DCHD. I saw the response from Ms. Heyer and I think that that's very commendable and it's, and we, it's great to have goals that, that we can achieve. We need, I like, like I said, I'd like to focus on getting the wheels back on the bus and making sure that we comply with I did talk to some folks at DCHD. Apparently there's another letter coming out to us with regard to our corrective action plan um, the, for more specificity in that area. And like I said, I'd be more than happy to work with those policies that Ms. Luna from Executech left behind. We paid them, so there's got to be something out there that they left behind. I hope there is. And um, I also inquired about specific training for members of the Housing Authority, unlike Bob, who's obviously very schooled in this. Um, the rest of us are new, and I'm, I'm expecting some correspondence back from them about what we can do. I know that the Mass Municipal Association has you know, training for selectmen, training for finance committees, and I'm sure that DCHD also has training for new board members. I'm going to be very interested in following up on that training. It's nice, like I said, you can read all the paper, but you don't always get the nuances. So it'd be very helpful to, got about to do five that. Minutes. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to be I'll giving be... the training on governance okay. to small housing authority directors and, and board members. When? Soon? It's going to be in Anguilla next month. <laughs> oh, <laughs> great. And are you paying the expenses? Great. We don't, we don't have a travel policy. Yes, how, we we gonna, how are we going to get we there? We do. We do. But we just made, we just, <laughs> just made one up. That's good. Um, so I, I, I did also receive this primer, which I'm going to give to Jackie to make yep. copies for the other sure. board members. Thank you. Um, it's very informative, and I know that we can't always follow it to the letter of the law, but I think that it's important for everybody to, to at least have a very basic um, training guide. Um, DCHD was very, when they sent my appointment letter, they were very kind to, to include that in the package. Um, I think that's about well, all I have for okay. for my questions okay. and concerns for this minute. She wants to. We want to know what the story is on the bathroom in there. Oh, okay. It's been we, out I know. Absolutely. Okay. We are. Just so you know, um, 
we are the, the problem unfortunately was when this building was built part of the whole entire plumbing of that unit was attached to um, I, I don't have the correct terminology but um, the maintenance maintenance has indicated to me that it is broken in order to fix it it is going to be um, it is on our list to be fixed and we need to get quotes because it's a little bit more extensive than changing a toilet out like we can change a toilet out in a unit it's actually attached to the wall which is attached to the building which is attached to the under the ground plumbing so is it attached actually, to the sewer system <laughs> eventually <laughs> but in, of course, so, and so it's a little bit more it's more of expense than we wanted to um that we had the ability to take on. Well, the reason we're asking, nobody knew. Right. Oh, okay. Well, I'm so sorry. Problem one. Okay. So this has been out of order for quite for a while. Quite a few yeah, right. it's been okay, can I speak on that? Go ahead. The sheriff's department that's painting the buildings and whatever, we're going to open it, open the doors this week. They're going to go in there, they're going to at least paint it and clean it up. And then after that, it's Jackie's problem to right. see if it's, they can get the yeah. Okay. Is there a toilet in there? Maybe there, that's the reason there's no toilet. Well, it's a toilet that's attached to the wall. It's not attached to the floor. It's not attached to the floor. So it's a wall hung toilet. It's a wall hung toilet, but that it has much like our stoops are attached to our uh, yeah. the foundation. This yeah. is attached up and around and underground. So you remove this, it affects that, it affects this. So that's what I've been told by my maintenance. So we need to like reconstruct the whole thing. Correct. It would be in our best interest. Uh, this is in regards to the generator. Okay, we know that it's set up, oh, okay. and it would take ten minutes to go on in case the lights go out. But also, like I was talking to Jackie, I packed the bag, my medicines, everything, because in case the lights went out and it was going to be out for a while, we would come over here. Yeah. But now it's. I have told Jackie. People don't know about emergency where to call okay. because before we had a, a car that had the list of everybody's cell phones okay. no in case of an emergency. We but are, now, we, Jack, yeah. could you explain right. that? To thank you, me? thank you. Um, um, in everybody's handbook, when I went back and read the, uh, regular, the handbooks that were given to the tenants when they first um, came in to be tenants. Um, the policy was that the, you were to call the 508-295-8031 number. That we have a 24-hour service. That's when, when we're not in the office, they pick up the line. They then will make the phone calls for you. So if it's a, you know, they, they, they actually call me first. And then if it's a maintenance issue, I call the maintenance department, whoever's on call. Or if it's me, I can make a phone call myself. So that's how it is. And the generator. After the lights go off for 10 minutes, the generator will kick in, and it kicks in so there's lights, electricity, and heat in this building. And um, I think there's 24 access, hour access to this building via the code and for the laundry room. And then um, and then Henry has access to the Agamon Village uh, Community Center. So, go ahead. May I? Go ahead, please. Is that, is that the answer? Do, is that, are you okay? Is that, no, do you want that's to, it. That's it. Thank you very much. You shoot a memo, a brief memo. We, we, we are, um, we are, Ms. Allison and I. I'm not telling you no, what to no, do. No, just no, 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 because communication is very important. I know you've been very and busy. We have been very busy. But I would like to institute very soon, sooner rather than later, um, a newsletter that goes to the residents. So that we're always once a month or once every other month right now um, until I'm, I'm up and running. So to speak, um, we're compliant and, and, and heading in a, in a much more better direction. Um, I would like to do that because that's important for our residents to have the information like that. Then <coughs> they don't have to be worried. Like, do Two I know something? Call. I'm sorry. Two minute call. That's all right. No, actually, um, I, I want everybody that has any maintenance issues or any issues at all can certainly leave a message because the the the. Um, the telephone service that we use has two levels one emergency one non-emergency if it's not emergency you go into the voicemail so even if it's six o'clock at night oh i meant to call maintenance i was out all day i want them to come by and check my leaky faucet you can call in they'll put you on our voicemail we get the voicemails in the morning and then the emergency they call me right away no matter what time of the night it is so just so you understand everybody understands that even if it's after four o'clock and our phone phone goes into the answering service 
But if I'm there, I still pick it up. But if it goes into the answering service, they'll put you in a voicemail if it's a non-emergency question. So I get the voicemails. We get the voicemails every morning, okay. unless it's weekend. Then we'll get it on Monday morning. Clarification on the issue of the generator. Is, it, is that an unusual situation? You said the power goes out and the little generator doesn't no. turn on the light for 10 minutes? No, no it's a 10 minute, they, it is a, it's actually an industry standard. So you ease, it eases in. So it has to wait 10 minutes before it kicks back in again. But before it recognizes that the lights have been gone for 10 minutes. Uh, so if it goes up and down, if it goes out for two minutes, the generator won't kick on and then kick off and kick okay, on. So they so wait 10 minutes and then it kicks on automatically. Before it goes on, it's 10 minutes of outage. Yes. Okay. Outage. Yeah, all right. And just so people are aware, I, I'm sure it's the same here as, as our community. Yeah. The generator goes on as a testing measure every Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Test the mode. Yeah. Once a week. It, it For actually, 15 minutes, and it's, it's rather noisy, but just so people aren't... Because when that happened the first time, I called right Jackie door, thinking why. something might be wrong with the new generator. So if you walk by the and that's door, when she told me about yeah. the test. Yeah. And then it'll be every Wednesday from no. now right. to, to ever. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. All right, thank you. Any further comments, questions, criticisms? Motion to adjourn. So moved. So, one thing, Oops. briefly. Before Mr. we adjourn, yeah. Yeah. after we well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's It's mainly a... I want to expose upon how grateful, <coughs> excuse me, I'm terrible, grateful we are to you for making the need of this housing authority something that we want to accomplish and to make it one of the best in the state small housing authority to fulfill all of your needs as best we can, this board in the intermittent. And please do not get bored by the numbers and the numbers on that, what we're talking about. As you can see, we're trying to get the monies in to re reduce the, the, the backlash. Yes, the backlash, and to accomplish what the chairman, the board, and the administrator wants you to do for this housing authority. So be patient. We have, I know about the camera, I'm not shy, I ain't worrying about the camera. Uh, so be patient. It's a little boring at times when we talk about section 358291. Let that go. Pay attention on the bottom line of what we're trying to do. Thank you so much. That's why I think that newsletter is, is important, that if you can do that, and not in great detail, but to let the residents know who can't attend these meetings or whatever, right. how things are ongoing, because some people feel like nothing's happening. But that's because they're not coming. You've, you've seen some improve, oh. improvement, right, in the Absolutely. past few months? Yeah, yes. right yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry we didn't have lunch for you this time, but we'll Second. be back for the party. You didn't finish the motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Um, Jane. Motion moved. Jane made the motion. Seconded by Thank Mr. Lockwood. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs>